bet at 60-40. Now, Bitter Bib is a hell of a guy and a hell of a fighter and has an awesome power. I always look at stuff from um, where I used to see things there for. Yeah. And the way I saw it, if somebody else knocked you down, I got to get you down. You understand me? Now, that's a hell of a push to walk through to get him down, though. So it's a very dangerous game that people all got to play because Bitter Bill is the best puncher probably ever in that division. Yeah. You understand me? So it's a great fight. If, you, if it's 50-50, it's because of his puncher power. Boxing pros have revealed why Artur Beterbiev is going to beat Dmitry Bivol. In October, under the dazzling lights of Saudi Arabia, the two titans will collide in an electrifying light heavyweight showdown for every undisputed world title, following the fight's rescheduling. Moreover, a star-studded undercard has been announced for Beterbiev's clash with Dmitry Bivol. Shakur Stevenson will defend his WBC world title against British talent Joe Cordina in the co-main event. This marks a significant opportunity for Cordina, who is stepping up from super featherweight following a surprising loss of his unified titles to Anthony Kakachi. In the event, Chris Eubank Jr. will finally make his comeback when he faces Polish veteran Kamil Sirimeta. This will mark his debut fight under boxer, following missed opportunities for high-profile bouts against Canelo Alvarez and Terence Crawford. He will be hoping that his opponent will only serve as a springboard for a future tilt at the world crown. One of the most eagerly awaited showdowns on the card is the highly anticipated re match between British heavyweights Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark. After a fierce and exhausting battle that concluded in a stalemate earlier this year, both fighters are now focused on securing a decisive victory and having their hands raised in triumph. With the renowned British crown at stake, viewers can anticipate more of the same exciting first match. Ben Whitaker, a gifted young talent who is quickly coming to prominence, will also play against Liam Cameron. A domestic competitor, Whitaker has gained significant notoriety for his flamboyant showmanship and remarkable skills, earning comparisons to the legendary Prince Nassim Hamed. Jai Opataya will compete against Jack Massey to defend his cruiserweight belt on the card as well. Making history, the first ever female bout on a Saudi boxing card will see the skilled Sky Nicholson face off against Raven Chapman for the coveted WBC featherweight world title. Finally, in his first professional match, Muhammad Alakal will square off off against Jesus Gonzalez. The main event, however, will be the long-awaited showdown between Better Beev and Bevel, as they finally bring their heated rivalry to a decisive conclusion after years of anticipation. The victor might face several potential challengers, one of whom is David Benavidez, the current WBC mandatory contender. Meanwhile, Roy Jones Jr., an all-time legend in the ring, certainly had his share of electrifying moments at 175 pounds. However, many believe that Superman, a fitting nickname for him in his prime, was at his absolute best as a super middleweight. Reflecting on the most anticipated light heavyweight clash in recent memory, Artur Beterbiev versus Dmitry Bivol, with everything on the line, Jones shared insights with Boxing Social that we should all pay attention to. Jones, who has defeated notable opponents like Montel Griffin, Mike McCallum in a less formidable state, Virgil Hill, Reggie Johnson, Julio Cesar Gonzalez, and Clinton Woods during his time at 175 pounds, is adamant that the October 12th unification bout between the two unbeaten Russian fighters is far from a toss-up. He already has a definitive winner in mind. Jones said of Baivol against Beterbiev, No, it's not a 50-50 fight. One, Beterbiev is much older. Beterbiev has been knocked down. Baivol has never been down. Bivol has been in there with who, at the time, was the pound-for-pound -pound best in Canelo Alvarez and made him look like nothing. So it's not a 50-50. Beterbiev has got everything to show me to bring it back to a 50-50 fight. Jones further added, Right now, Bivol has the advantage at 60-40ths. Now, Beterbiev is a hell of a guy and one hell of a fighter and has awesome power, but he has also been down, and the way I see it is, if someone else has knocked you down, then I've got to get you down. You understand me? Now, it's one hell of a punch to walk through to get him down, so it's a very dangerous game to play. Facing Beterbiev Beterbiev is undeniably a perilous endeavor. Just ask any of his past opponents who had to contend with his flawless knockout record. Despite being 39 and having been floored, as Jones pointed out, Beterbiev always rises to claim victory. No fighter has ever managed to go the distance with him. However, one might wonder, has Beterbiev ever encountered a boxer as technically adept as Bevel? And has Bevel, at 33, ever squared off against an adversary with the sheer destructive power that Beterbiev brings to the ring? Questions like these only heighten our anticipation for this long-awaited showdown. While Jones raises some valid points, I'm sticking with my prediction. Beterbiev will secure another KO or stoppage when the fight finally happens. Earlier this year, Dmitry Bivol successfully defended his World Boxing Association title with a sixth-round TKO over Malik Zinad. The victory, achieved in the vibrant
vibrant setting of Riyadh's Kingdom Arena solidified Bevel's perfect record of 23-0 and reinforced his status as a premier contender in the light heavyweight division. Bivol seized control of the fight from the outset, leaving Zanad struggling to keep pace with the Russian powerhouse. From the very first bell, Bivol exuded confidence and purpose, commanding the ring with a formidable presence and even flooring the Libyan before the first round concluded. The highly anticipated showdown between Bivol and Artur Baturbiev had fans buzzing with excitement, but fate had other plans. A surprising knee injury sidelined Baturbiev, causing the much-expected clash to be scrapped. In a bid to keep Bivol's momentum going, Malik Zinad was brought in as a last-minute replacement. Though Zinad was not fully prepared or on par with Bivol's caliber, he stepped up to the challenge, filling the void left by Baturbiev. Bivol's triumph heralds a fresh era in the light heavyweight division. The highly anticipated showdown for the undisputed light heavyweight title against Against Beterbiev, initially slated for the same event, is now officially set for October 12th. Bivol's outstanding display in the ring is a clear signal to his future challenger, setting up what is poised to become one of the most electrifying bouts of the year in the boxing arena. On the other hand, boxing coach Skipper Kelp has shown exactly how Artur Beterbiev has maintained his incredible KO power. Beterbiev has crafted a remarkable undefeated streak since entering the professional ranks, securing a flawless 20-0 record with each victory coming by knockout. He has harnessed an intimidating strength that has elevated him to become one of the most formidable punchers in the sport in recent years. Additionally, boxing coach Kelp has revealed to the public what he thinks is Beterbiev's formula for success. He dazzled his Instagram followers with an extraordinary move known as the Iron Fist, effortlessly slipping into the press-up position for a jaw-dropping display. Kelp leapt into the air, pumping his fist with a rhythmic motion. He bounced up and down, his hand shifting from an open palm to a tight fist, and finally to a position with his knuckles facing outward before he landed back on the ground. This is a very advanced and intense exercise for strengthening the muscles in your hands, wrists, and fingers. Light heavyweight champion Arthur Betterbeev does this exercise and it has contributed to his 100% knockout ratio. I had fragile hands when I competed and did nothing more than treat the problem with extra padding, ice, and physical therapy to heal the injury, never truly addressing the fact that I needed to have more durable hands. Much like the shins of a Muay Thai fighter, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So gradually condition your hands, wrists, and fingers and develop an iron fist. The drill appeared to be a formidable test of strength and resolve, demanding considerable effort. However, it promised to greatly enhance wrist power in the process. He explained in the caption, This is a very advanced and intense exercise for strengthening the muscles in your hands, wrists, and fingers. Light heavyweight champion Artur Beterbiev does this exercise and it has helped contribute to his 100% KO ratio, so you can gradually develop your muscles and let them develop to help you get an iron fist. There's no doubt that Beterbiev packs an explosive punch, as evidenced by his ability to take down fighters like Anthony Yarde and Callum Smith with sheer force. In October, he will confront Dimitri Bivol in the most daunting challenge of his career thus far, with the opportunity to claim the title of undisputed champion hanging in the balance. It might be the ideal curtain call at 39, but there might be some prestigious tests to come. This week, Eddie Hearn sat down with IFL TV to discuss, among other topics, the highly anticipated undercard for the October 12th light heavyweight unification clash between Artur Baturbiev and Dmitry Bivol. Set to unfold in Riyadh, the event promises an exceptional undercard, according to Hearn's latest remarks. Since the influential Saudi investors made their dramatic entrance into the sport, fans have become accustomed to seeing top-tier cards stacked with talent, and with their continued support, these high-value, exciting events are set to keep rolling in. Hearn said of the October 12th card, there is a template of the undercard that is in place now. Now all the contracts are being drawn up, and obviously, Riyadh's season will make that announcement. I would say that they'll hopefully be in a position next week to announce the undercard for October 12th. It's a really good undercard. You sit there again, you just look at it, and you go, how do you do that? You don't see anything like it. What can fans expect on the October fight card? Speculation is already buzzing. One intriguing possibility is a heavyweight rematch between Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley, which might feature on the undercard. Additionally, there's talk of a potential 5 versus 5 showdown, echoing the Queensberry versus Matchroom clash from June 1st, the same night Batterby 
Georgiev and Bivol were initially slated to face off. Let's see what the undercard looks like for next week. It looks like another impressive lineup is on the way. It's astonishing to hear that some fans still criticize Turki Alalshik and his team despite the constant flow of top-notch events they're delivering. With so many stellar cards coming our way, it's baffling that some people are still not satisfied. With the highly anticipated bout on October 12th approaching, the question arises, will Bedrbiev's recent inactivity be his downfall, or will the youthful, vibrant Bivol claim victory? Alternatively, could Bedrbiev's rare and formidable punching power turn the tide in his favor once more? This matchup is bound to be a spectacle worth the anticipation. Blair Cobbs anticipates Artur Bedrbiev's collision with Dmitry Bivol later this year to be too strong. Cobbs, a contender at welterweight, believes Bivol will be his hardest test to date and expects him to win. Cobbs mentioned that Artur Baterbiev possesses incredible strength and power, and he expressed uncertainty about how Bivol would be able to handle such a formidable opponent. Cobbs doubted Bivol's ability to survive against Baterbiev, but acknowledged that the fight would be very interesting. He suggested that Bivol could potentially land numerous punches on Baterbiev and accumulate points, making it an exciting match. Match. Cobbs added that the fight would be worth watching and that he was eager to see it. Better Beef is incredible, man. He's incredible. He's like, what, he's like 40 or something, right? He's, yeah, I think he's about 38, 39. 38, 39, incredibly, and like unbelievable strength and power. Um, I don't know how Bevo's going to be able to fight somebody like that. Um, cause that back and forth bouncing up, you know, that movement that he uses, I don't know if that really works against somebody that throws a lot of powerful arm punches that like, he doesn't have to be like, he doesn't have to have a rhythm to whoop your ass. And I don't see Bevo being able to survive something like that, but it'd be very interesting cause he could, Bevo could land too many punches on um, Bitter Beef and mess around and, and start piling on points. So I don't know, but that's gonna be a very exciting fight. Meanwhile, David Benavidez will probably have to step into the ring once more to keep himself in top form, as he bides his time for a shot at the victor of the showdown between Artur Biterbiev and Dmitry Bivol. It's too soon to confirm whether the better BF Bivol showdown will take place on that date. With one injury-related delay already in the mix and two months remaining until October, the situation remains uncertain. In camp, one of them might get hurt. A rematch is also a possibility, albeit it might take a long time to happen because of the risk of injury. Benavides has stepped into the light heavyweight division only once, where he narrowly outpointed former WBC champion Oleksandr Gvostik on June 15th. The fight, a 12-round unanimous decision, revealed Benavides' struggle with endurance, as he noticeably fatigued after the sixth round. Benavides' triumph secured him the WBC interim 175-pound title and positioned him as the mandatory challenger for Baderbiev's belt with that organization. Despite this, Benavides seemed to falter as the bout progressed, visibly struggling after six rounds. The match seemed to end in a draw, but the Nevada judges awarded Benavides a decisive 12-round victory. Benavides shouldn't just bide his time for a year, hoping for the big payday showdown against the better BF by Vol clash. Instead, he should seize the opportunity to gain valuable experience at 175 by facing off against one or two of these contenders. Getting to this fight is tough if this October 12th is actually going to be the date. And then whoever wins the bigger BF versus Bivol fight, how soon are they going to return, said Chris Algieri to the ProBox TV YouTube channel about whether David Benavides will get a chance to fight the winner of the Artur Beterbiev versus Dmitry Bigel clash. Benavides should have been gearing up for his next fight instead of resting on his laurels since his victory in June. Given his and his management's awareness of the advancing age of Bivol and Beterbiev, they should have anticipated a higher likelihood of injuries. Malinaji said, Benavides may have the inside track for the winner of that fight if there's not a rematch. This could go on a lot longer. I think Benavides should stay active in the light heavyweight division, which is a very deep division with a lot of talented guys in there. Even if Benavides seems to have the upper hand, the Betterbiev versus Bivol bout remains shrouded in uncertainty. Factors like potential injury setbacks and the likelihood of a rematch add layers of unpredictability. In fact, a second clash between them feels almost inevitable. Benavides's performance against Gvozdik was so lackluster, revealing a noticeable drop in both his power and endurance, that he should have been lining up a new fight immediately. A bout with Willie Hutchinson would be an excellent opportunity for Benavides to stay active. If Hutchinson isn't available, he could also consider facing off 
off against Morel or Osles Iglesias. Malinaji said, Joshua Boatsi is fighting Willie Hutchinson. He fought Craig Richards on June 1st in Riyadh and won a 12-round decision. Hutchinson was very impressive to me. I'd never seen him before. There's a lot of talented guys that could tangle with Benavidez waiting for the winner of the fight between Betterbiev and Bival to be sorted out. Benavidez's interest in facing any of those fighters remains uncertain. With a lucrative bout already set against the winner of the Better BF Bivol clash, he stands to gain significantly from battling the victor of that high stakes encounter. Malinaji added, If Bivol and Better BF are going to fight, you figure that Benavides is going to fight again before he fights the winner. I'd like to see Benavides fight at light heavyweight again just to get a gauge to see where he's at. After Joshua Buatzi secured a decision victory over Dan Aziz in February, he took a moment to assess the light heavyweight scene and the view couldn't have been more promising. With Artur Baderbiev gearing up for a unification bout against Dmitry Bivol and a WBO interim title clash with Yarde appearing locked in, the 31-year-old fighter's previously stuttering career seemed at last to be gaining real traction. What's said to be true regarding well-laid plans? Yard found himself tangled in a prolonged contractual battle with Queensberry Promotions. Shortly after, Baderbiev suffered a knee injury, pushing his bout with Bivol back by four months. Boatsy's toughest rival has consistently been inactivity, a shadow that has loomed over his entire career. With all four light heavyweight world titles locked away for the rest of 2024 and his most lucrative, marquee opponent facing an extended hiatus, Buatsi found himself grappling with the unsettling possibility of being sidelined yet again. Watching the drama of the 175-pound division unfold from a frustrating distance, luckily, other events lined up perfectly for him. First, Willie Hutchinson delivered a standout performance, defeating Craig Richards in Saudi Arabia. Shortly after, the WBO swiftly approved Queensberry's request to position the 26-year-old Hutchinson for a fight against Boatsy, bypassing Yard, staging the Daniel Dubois versus Anthony Joshua showdown at London's Wembley Stadium naturally set the stage for the Boatsy versus Hutchinson clash. Boatsy, undefeated with an 18-0 record and 13 KOs, wasted no time getting back into training. He'll face Hutchinson, who holds an 18-1 record with 13 KOs in London on September 21st. Boatsy told Boxing Scene, after the Aziz fight, I think I had a month off. I still trained, but it was a month in England and Europe. It was a month away from camp, basically. Then, I came back to the States till early June. I figured out the fight with Yarda wasn't going to happen. I wanted to fight in mid-June. Boatsy mentioned that after returning and watching the fight between Richard Riakpurhe and Chris Billum Smith, he stayed around, and when the opportunity for his own fight arose, he got on a plane and headed back out. He explained that he had been training and in camp during this time. Boatsy addressed the curiosity some people have about what he does during the long intervals between fights, explaining that just as others get up and go to work, he gets up and goes to the gym, emphasizing that training is his routine and the first thing he does each day. He added, Once you're finished, you can do whatever you want. But when I wake up, I go to the gym first and spend hours there, and then the day is mine. When I come to the States, it's literally only boxing. That's all I do out here. If Boatsy overcomes Hutchinson, the buzz around a potential clash with Yarda will undoubtedly reignite. However, his immediate focus is on defeating the Scotsman and securing a spot ringside in Saudi Arabia on October 12th to witness Betterbiev and Bivol face off in a highly anticipated showdown. He said, That will be the next move after this fight, God willing. Head out there to see the two champions go at it and see who unifies the division. For over three years, Boatsy has journeyed to California, honing his craft under the guidance of the esteemed Virgil Hunter. Such transatlantic collaborations rarely endure unless both sides not only appreciate the mutual benefits, but also share a vision for continued success and growth. Boatsy earned widespread praise for expertly handling the tenacious and fierce Aziz. But under the guidance of the perfectionist Hunter, Boatsy has embraced a similar mindset. As Boatsy reviewed the fight footage, it didn't take long for him to pinpoint opportunities for improvement and moments he wished he'd managed differently. When he and Hunter later exchanged their thoughts, their critiques were perfectly aligned. Buatsi explained, There's a few things that I picked up on and he was like, Yeah, that's not good. There are things to work on, things to improve, and things that you can't get away with all of the time. As much as it was a dominant win, from my perspective, there's still so much to work on. There's a lot of things that I wasn't happy with. I got the job done comfortably, but there's a lot more to work on and things that, going forward, I won't be able to get away with. 
Before Benavidez made his light heavyweight debut against Oleksandr Gvozdik on June 15, Fight Hub TV caught up with him for an interview where he offered his insights on the Bivol vs. Baderbiev showdown. Benavidez commented that it would be a tough fight for both fighters, though he was slightly leaning towards Bivol due to Bivol's exceptional boxing skills and punching power. He noted that Baderbiev, being a bit older, might be experiencing some physical decline. While Benavidez acknowledged Baderbiev's hard work and dedication, he pointed out that Baderbiev's extensive weight training could be contributing to his body's breakdown, as excessive weightlifting can have adverse effects in boxing. I think it's gonna be a great fight for both men. Um, they both, they both have to be extremely ready. Um, this is a hard fight for both of them. I'm kind of leaning again uh, uh, with Bivol. Bivol, um, he's a great boxer and he has punching power. And then Alberto B, I think he's a little bit older. You know, I think his body's breaking down a little bit. He works really hard. I don't, I, you know, I don't take nothing away from him, but he does a lot of weights and in boxing. When you do too much weights like that, that's when you start to break down more. So. Um, I'm leaning a little bit more towards people. Last month, David Benavides revealed his intention to shift gears, leaving the super middleweight division behind as he set his sights on the light heavyweight class. Despite his relentless pursuit for over a year, El Monstruo had faced immense difficulty in securing the 168-pound showdown he coveted, a title bout against the reigning champion Canelo Alvarez. Although Alvarez's WBC mandatory challenger, the sanctioning body failed to enforce the bout, compelling the American to switch divisions in his quest for un undisputed greatness. He is now set to confront Oleksandr Gvozdik, a familiar opponent from past sparring sessions. In a recent interview, he candidly revealed that the 27-year-old had completely outclassed him during their time together in the training ring. Super middleweight challenger Lonnie Thompson is confident that unified light heavyweight champion Artur Beterbiev will secure a swift knockout win against WBA title holder Dmitry Bivol. Lonnie has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with IBF, WBC, and WBO champion Beterbiev in the ring, experiencing his formidable power and skill up close. He believes that Bivol lacks the size and strength needed to withstand Beterbiev's onslaught in their highly anticipated showdown, streaming live on DAZN PPV from the Kingdom Arena. Fans and odds make backing Bivol might not fully grasp the prowess of Beterbiev. They're inflating Dmitry's reputation based on his victory over Canelo Alvarez two years back, placing undue emphasis on that bout. Thompson was struck by Beterbiev's commanding performance on January 13th in Quebec City, where the knockout artist dispatched former WBA super middleweight champion Callum Smith in the seventh round. Beterbiev's dominance was absolute, rendering Smith, whom Thompson believes has the stature, to contend at cruiserweight, completely outmatched. I'm excited excited for the fight. It's going to be on. You know who I'm going to be rocking with Beterbiev. I don't think it's going to go past seven or eight, said Lonnie Thompson to pro boxing fans picking Artur Beterbiev to defeat Dmitry Bivol in their light heavyweight undisputed championship fight in Riyadh. Lonnie believes Bivol's mobility isn't sufficient to prevent Beterbiev from cornering him and forcing him into exchanges that are unfavorable, especially against such a powerful puncher. Last December, Lyndon Arthur managed to hurt Bivol and played it safe in the later rounds of their bout. Lonnie said, I could be wrong, but I doubt it. Somebody who is like Callum Smith, who is extremely big, who could really possibly fight at cruiserweight. Artur got him out of there in seven. Bivol could really fight at super middleweight. Baderbiev hasn't been on the shelf for long. His last bout was in January marking his second fight of 2024. The real concern isn't the break, it's whether his recently injured knee is fully recovered and capable of withstanding the demands of a rigorous full fight. Thompson said about Bider Biev, oh well, he's getting better, but now it's, maybe it's the layoff now. The man is just good, get over it. Listen, he's a freak of nature. His age doesn't matter, he's that good. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.